Good morning, everybody. Wish everybody a happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter, Easter, everybody. Welcome this morning. We're in coffee and comments. We're a couple of minutes late. We've got Mig trying to dial in live, but we will get there. But happy Easter, everybody. It's so lovely to every uh, to see everyone who's tuned in. Welcome this morning. This is not the official start to the service. This is just a lovely moment where we can just say happy Easter. If you have an account with, I think it's YouTube, you have to have an account with, you can uh, type in a comment and say hello to everybody. Um, I want to say happy Easter, Viv, Dan, Hunter. Oh, yes, at Hill House and Sylvia and Tony and James and Tim, the Palmers. Happy Easter to you guys. Brian, Sue Waitman, happy Easter. S looking forward to celebrating his victory. Absolutely right. Ray and Rona. Blessings to you all on this glorious day and to you, Ray and Rona. And Dave and Lisa, happy Easter to you guys. Jenny Met, Tim Trethaway, uh, John Thompson, the Jewel family, the Salters, Joe Williams. Happy Easter to all of you guys. Do you want to say happy Easter to them all? Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you lot. You can say happy Easter happy anytime Easter. you like on Easter morning. You, say it, you can't say it too many times. So we've got uh, the Birch family. Uh, the Creech ones, so Jane, um, Ken and Peggy Darch, the Wardens, and uh, Michelle Armstrong, Rob Bradley. That's a strange surname, Rob Bradley. Who's Rob Bradley? <laughs> oh, it's Grandad. Morning to you, Mum and Dad, tuning in. Bless you. Happy Easter to you, Ralph, the Bullocks, um, the Bookers, Ian and Sue Camp, Donald Duck. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> it turns out as the Marshals. Happy Easter from Donald Duck. That is lovely that Disney have tuned in and uh, sent Donald to wish us happy Easter. Bless you, Marshalls. Uh, the Coles, the Franklins, Rachel Hay. What a glorious day for this celebration. Amen to that. And it is a celebration this morning. Candita, Leon, bless you both. Happy Easter. And Brian and Penny. And again, the Salters, thank you, and the Duncan family, the Cokes, Phil and Angela, Gary Birch, the Birch family in Lark Hill. Bless you guys. Lovely you've all tuned in. And the Morgans, bless you. Glad you're doing a bit better, Tina and Cheryl. Oh, whilst I remember, I believe it might be Mark and Judy Fox's 40th wedding anniversary. If I've got that wrong on Easter day, if I've got that wrong, I'm in trouble. But it might be. I think it is. If it is happy uh, anniversary to you as well. Um, Catherine Davies, the Kellens, uh, Tim and Bob. Happy Easter from a church newbie. Tim Crouch, you're so welcome. Bless you and happy Easter this morning to you. May you be blessed by God. Bob, he is risen. Yippee. I love that. Trevor Williams, the Mangies, Becky Lang, Abigail Warden. Oh, wow. There are so many hellos. I can barely go through them. Um, we are almost going to stop. I'm going to go for a really quick hello to everyone. Graham Robinson, Graham and Sue, the Orams, Toffs, Huffmans. Uh, oh, James and Julie, Jed and Flynn Walker. Um, We've got John Haddle. We've got Colin from x and Devon. Happy Easter. Rachel Fenton, Nathan G. The Hugheses, the Cobbies, uh, Robbie Wellham. Oh, morning, Robbie. Good to see you. Happy Easter. Leilani Turner. Thank you to all the Turners, the Browses, the Dowsons, the Kings, the Barnes. This is so good. The Lintons, the Nevins, the Toffs, the Cavigans, the Wallaces, and the Medlocks. Happy Easter to you all. I believe, guys, it is probably time for us to and wrath. And M, happy Easter to you two. I think it's time that we start our service um, officially, shall we? Coffee and Commons is the coolest way of starting a service. And this is where I would normally say at the front, please come and take your seats. We are about to start. Come and bring your coffees. Come and bring your joy. Come and bring your celebration this Easter Sunday. We're going to start. So, um, I want to say welcome to you this Easter morning. I want to say happy Easter to you. If you are from Creech Baptist Church, I want to wish you a really warm happy Easter. If you're not, you're visiting us this morning uh, virtually uh, from somewhere else, wherever you might be in the country or from one of our uh, Baptist cluster churches in our Southwest Federation, wherever you are tuning in from, we wish you a really happy Easter and pray God's blessing on you all this morning. We're going to start with our Easter shout. So if I can get Leilani up on screen, watch this. 
Richard Graham is the guy behind the scenes. Hi, Mike and Lilani. Great to see you. Happy Easter, guys. Happy Easter. Uh, we're going to do our Easter shout. So for folks at home, I and me and my girlies are going to shout, Christ is risen. And then you guys all join in with the Turners shouting, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So here we go. Christ is risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. So scripture says this, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, the power of sin, the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together just in this moment at the beginning of our service, shall we? So, Jesus, we celebrate you this morning. We delight and we celebrate that you are alive. You have risen. You are risen. You are with us now. Jesus, we praise you that death itself could not hold you. You bust death apart because you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of all. And Lord, you love us and you are with us. This morning, would you help us as we celebrate your resurrection, as we celebrate your victory, as we remember the cross and as we delight in you, our Lord and our Saviour. Pour out your Holy Spirit, we ask. Touch every heart this morning, hearts that are close to you, hearts that don't yet know your love and your hope. Lord, this morning, touch hearts, we pray for the first time in the way that only you can. In Jesus, your precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 And I want to just share with you a prayer um, that my uh, wife uh, had in her readings this morning. And maybe we all want to pray this one together. It says this, Lord, please open my eyes and heart to the truth of your resurrection. Please help me to believe it with everything that I am. And then show me how it changes everything. Amen. Amen to that. Well, friends, it is an unexpected Easter this morning, and this is an all-age service. For those who don't know me, my name is Matt. I'm one of the pastors here. We'll be joined later by uh, Meg Partridge, um, the youth pastor as well. But this is an all-age service. So over the next just under an hour or so, um, we're going to do all sorts of ways of celebrating Easter together as family of all ages. But we've called this service an unexpected Easter. And we're going to be focusing on all the unexpected ways that Jesus blessed and surprised his disciples in that first Easter day. But also a bit of an unexpected Easter for us all at home tuning in on our computers as well, isn't it? So we're going to start with a reading of that first unexpected morning. And I'm delighted that Ben Jewell's done this reading for us. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how we told you whilst he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. They did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Why do you look for the living among the dead? The tomb was empty. Yes, that first Easter was something totally and unexpected, although Jesus had told his disciples they just didn't realize it was actually going to happen, that he was going to rise from the dead and meet them that glorious Easter morning. Um, 
it was the most amazing and unexpected thing that Jesus was alive. Who knew we were going to celebrate his resurrection this year, 2020, at home, in quarantine, in lockdown, amidst all this corona crisis? Well, I believe Jesus did know that. And it may be the only Easter we ever celebrate like this, but celebrate we will. We will celebrate the greatest day in history history where death was defeated. We're going to sing a song that we love to sing at Easter, Greatest Day in History. Us guys, we're not going to be on camera. We're going to be dancing about this side. Join in, sing your hearts out, and let's worship and praise Jesus, shall we? Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. He empty across the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Meeting face to face, I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. And this joy, perfect peace, of the pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. He's alive. So, Lord Jesus, on this happy day where we celebrate the most amazing news ever that you raised from the dead, that you are the one who defeated death, defeated sin. And because of you, we can be changed forever. We pray that you would change us again this day, Lord. Fill us again with your hope, with your truth. Fill us again with faith where we have wavered. Fill us again with trust where we have struggled. Lord, today we ask risen King Jesus, come and fill our hearts and bless us now in your precious name. We celebrate you and we praise you now. Amen. 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 Right, guys, uh, a few notices just quickly before we carry 
on. I want to welcome everybody who is streaming live on the Southwest Baptist Association Facebook page. You are so welcome to join us. We're Creech Baptist Church. We're a family friendly, warm church. And this is a bit of chaos this morning um, where we will uh, be doing an all age service. You're so welcome to have joined us and we pray God's blessing um, and you might know his love on this celebration Easter morning today. Um, you're going to need guys, this is all of us, just in a moment. So later on in the service, you're going to need a piece of A4 paper. Nothing too tricky, but a piece of A4 paper. It could be any color you like. Yes. And what else do they need? They're going to need some scissors. So that's everyone you may not need the scissors if you've got strong hands and can tear paper you may not need the scissors when it's folded but uh, for some of you might need it and you're also going to need very good you two aren't you uh, you're also going to need a pen okay so a piece of paper just grab one from somewhere a pen and some scissors ready for later on i want to remind uh, our folks at creech that our easter love gift where we give above and beyond our regular giving so that's when we do it at different stages throughout the year we give a love gift. This Easter love gift is for the leprosy mission, and that is still open until the 26th of April. So today is a good day to give. We are aware that for some folks, finances are not easy right now. So please don't feel any pressure in what I say there, but um, just pray and give what you feel able or what you'd like to give um, for the uh, leprosy mission. The details of that will be on our website and on the uh, weekly email and we're suggesting that most people give by backs this time because that's contactless and we can do it that way um, and the final thing to remind you is for folks even if you haven't used it yet um, the help at Creech BC email is still there we're here to help all of you folks that uh, may need some practical support collecting prescriptions food shopping things like that I know there are lots of services around the villages and towns as well doing that but if for whatever reason you're struggling, then let us know at help at creechbc.co.uk and we have got a team of volunteers who will help you out. It'll be our love, uh, our joy and a total delight to do that for you. So there the notices. It is a beautiful day, is it not? The sun is streaming if I sit at the right place right on our faces here and I'm looking out of my garden that way. It is a gorgeous time of year where there are all sorts of things changing in the garden, new buds and new uh, leaves and new life. And so I thought I'd take us over to our spring expert, our agricultural expert. Nonetheless, uh, Ian Tremaine is going to give us um, a little bit of Easter, uh, Easter watch from his garden at home. Over to you, Ian. Now we love keeping chickens and this is Morwenna, uh, sort of my favourite chickens. Um, thought you should have favourites, but it's lovely to um, come out, especially in the springtime. Now, uh, most chickens have a little bit of a well-earned winter break um, and they stop laying when the daylight uh, length is shorter. So in the springtime, they start to lay again. And uh, lovely this time you have fresh eggs to eat every morning. So I'm going to come and pick up the eggs now. And oh my goodness, look, <laughs> look what they've laid for us this morning. Now I have, um, we have some little bantam eggs and we've got some um, cream eggs. Now I don't know which hen laid which egg, but I think I'm going to enjoy eating this one this morning. Cream eggs found by Ian Tremaine in his hen's laying box. What do you think, Sophie? Would you like a cream egg instead of a real egg? A fried cream egg, anybody this Not morning? Not it's a beautiful time of year. And cream eggs and chocolate eggs is one of the things that lots of us hoped and expected for this morning. Did you girls get any Easter eggs this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you did. Do you want to show your Easter eggs? We've got some here. Oh, we've got one. There you go. This is the smallest one I believe you got, wasn't it, Sophie? There were a few. Yeah, you can go. Come and show us in a second. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Ian was not expecting cream eggs uh you guys may have been but you know the easter story actually is all about an unexpected surprise okay come on you show me out so we got a twirl one here anybody get a twirl one anybody like the twirl ones that's amelie's favorite sophie what have you got there come and show sophie's so look at that there are other chocolates available but that is a cabri's cream egg well 
uh, Queen Easter egg. egg. We're going to tell the story now because Ian was surprised by the hens laying cream eggs or somebody had snuck them in there. But actually, the Easter story is all about one of the biggest surprises ever for Jesus's friends. You see, they were really, really sad. Richard, could we bring up the picture? It's hard for me to tell you just how sad Jesus's friends were. If you look at this picture, you can see Jesus holding a heavy cross and it was the cross that he was nailed to and it was the cross that he died on. And for his friends, this was one of the most tragic and hurting things they've ever felt in their lives. It's hard for me to explain how sad they felt. They were desperately sad. Could we go to the next picture? It felt like darkness to them. People were crying. It felt out of control. It felt unsafe. Their friend, their teacher, he was now dead. Can we go to the next picture? Many, many Many of Jesus's friends thought that was it. It was all over. They felt like somehow God had let them down. They felt like Jesus had somehow got it all wrong. And even though he told them it would happen, they just completely and utterly felt like Jesus had messed it all up and he'd been killed. And that was the end of that. And so in the morning, the women, so... Firstly, they put his body in a tomb the night he died. And then they waited for the Sabbath, the rest day, before they could go and see his body to put some special perfume on it, to look after it, to, to care for it, all wrapped up. Could we go to the next picture? So that morning, that first Easter morning, you can see the perfume held in her hand. The women went to the tomb and they expected it to be a very sad day. They were still distraught and so, so sad to have lost Jesus. So sad. So sad. And they expected when they got there to find the body and to put the special ointment on it, to look after it, to close it back over and to close that tomb and never go back again. But they were in for the biggest surprise, the biggest unexpected joy ever because this is what happened when they got there next picture please when they got there the first thing they noticed was that the tomb was open have we got the tomb picture at all if we can whip to that one yes the tomb was open and the tomb was empty his body wasn't there and then as if that wasn't a surprise enough they met an angel and the angel said why are you looking for him here? He's risen. He is alive. And they must have been so bewildered and so confused. And as they were running to tell their friends, if we go back to the other picture we just had, the biggest surprise of all, they met Jesus on the way and he said hello to them and he knew their names. And he said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I am alive. Go and tell the others. And so when they went and told the others after the others had had a few moments of doubts and finally they met Jesus for themselves, everybody, if we could go to the last picture, was so, so excited. It was supposed to be a day of utter sadness and it turned into a day of unexpected joy. It's hard for me to tell you how happy they would have felt, how amazed, how bewildered, how overwhelmed they would have been cheering and weeping and laughing and dancing and hugging and high-fiving and punching the air because Jesus, who was dead, was now alive and that changes everything, everything. You see, it's really easy to underestimate Jesus. It's really easy to think, oh, you know, maybe he's got it all wrong. Maybe he doesn't care. Maybe he's far, far away. But the first thing we want you to realize this morning is that Easter reminds us, don't 
underestimate Jesus. Never, ever underestimate Jesus. For he knows what he's doing. He is in control. He does care. And he is an expert. I love this at turning sorrow into joy. He is an expert in turning expected sadness into unexpected joy. He's an expert at surprising us with the things that he wants to do, even when bad things are happening all around us. Like at the moment with this coronavirus, there is such sadness and we don't belittle that. We don't hide from that. But we don't underestimate Jesus in all of this. Let's not underestimate him today because he is able to do immeasurably more than we dare ask or imagine. Not even death could stop Jesus's love. Not even the grave could hold him. He's the author of life. He bursts back to life again and he is alive and he is with us now. And it is the best news ever. The king of peace, of love and joy is alive. And so we're going to celebrate this good news. We're going to sing a song celebrating the best news ever. It's a song called Good News. And we're going to teach you the actions, the words you're going to have to try and listen to and remember as you sing along with us. Right. So Bradley's, I'm going to call the rest of my family, see who turns up. I've got Sophie and Emily here. Bradley's time for an action song. Let's see who turns up. And we're going to sing this song together. So here we go. Let's turn this round. Here we go. Here we go. Right. Are we all in shot? Okay. Looking good. Looking good. Here we go. Okay. All right. So before we start that song, we're going to tell you the actions. I put it up a bit. So it goes like this. It goes, good news. Get your thumbs out. Jesus is, was born. Good news. He died on a cross. Good news. He rose again. Good news. He's coming back soon and we look out for him. And then it says, God sent Jesus and we touch our palms where the nails were. His only son to save me from my sin. We write on our hands and then we wash it all away. He's the only one who can change my heart and make it his own. He knows me. He loves me. My heart is his home. So they're the words. See if you can remember them. See if you can join in. But if not, you can certainly do the dancing with us. So, right, let's turn the volume up and let's sing good news. Here we go. Okay, here we go. You ready? Oh, spilled some water. No problem. Here we go. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Let's turn it on. Turn the speaker on. Come on, Matthew. Technology. Here we go. That's better. All right, you're all ready. That's it. It's working. Here we go. Good news. Good news. Jesus was born. Good news. He died on the cross. Good news. He rose again. Good news. He's coming back soon. Good news. Jesus was born. Good news. He died on the cross, good news. He rose again, good news. He's coming back soon. God sent Jesus, his only son, to save me from my sin. He's the only one who can change my heart and make me his own. He saved me, he loved me, my heart is his own. Good news, here we go. Jesus was born, good news. He died on the cross, good news. He rose again, good news, he's coming back soon. All right, that dancing. Easter celebration dancing. Come on, Archie, you can do a boogie. That's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Here we go. Oh, longer, longer. Hope you're dancing at home. That's a nice boogie, everyone. We're calling this the Bradley boogie. Here we go. God sent Jesus, his only son, to save me from my sin. He's the only one who can change my heart and make me his own. He saved me, he loves me, my heart is his own. Good news, 
Jesus was born, good news, he loudly cried on the cross, good news, he rose again, good news, he's coming back soon, good news, he's coming back soon, good news, he's coming back soon, good news, he's coming back soon. Oh, yeah, we're there. Big round of applause. Well done, you lot. Absolutely fab. Absolutely fab. Brilliant. Well, there's your aerobics workout for the day. That's your aerobics workout for the day, or at least it's certainly mine. It's so good to celebrate the good news this morning of Jesus rising from the dead. Now we're going to go over and we're going to listen to a cartoon story. We've paid for these from Saddleback Church. We're so grateful for these amazing cartoons that tell us the story using the biblical words of what happened, why Jesus went to that cross and how he rose again. So let's watch this together. Stories of the Bible. Jesus's sacrifice. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. <laughs> And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. 
Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? Hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Good morning, everybody. So Jesus had given his disciples so many hints. He talked about the sign of Jonah and telling the disciples that the Messiah's got to suffer. He got Peter's famous stuff up where he didn't get it so much that, that Jesus actually refers to him as Satan and tells him to get behind him. And then sometimes he was really plain, I'm going back to the Father. But nobody understood it. They just couldn't grasp the enormity of God's unexpected plan. They're still looking for a savior who could save them now, physically, be with them now, physically. Some of them had spent time on the road arguing about who would be the greatest because they all thought that they were going to cruise into the physical kingdom of God and rule and reign in the first century Jerusalem with a physical Jesus on a physical throne and the physical Romans all kicked out of the way. And when Jesus spoke to Pilate, he made it plain that his kingdom was not of this world, but it's still the only kind of kingdom that anybody understood. So when he got crucified, they didn't understand. This wasn't supposed to happen. How's this salvation? It just didn't make any sense. And when he died and Joseph and Nicodemus took his body and laid it in the tomb, they were crushed. How could this be? It's the end of everything. Three years of hope and miracles, and now it's all over. But like Isaiah the prophet had said hundreds of years before, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, declares the Lord. And when the women came to the tomb, they're expecting a body. How were they expecting to get in? I have no idea. Maybe the soldiers had moved the stone, but they were expecting a body, a crushed and broken body without life and ready only for a ritual embalming and a complete burial. So these girls had been up early in the morning preparing spices. They couldn't make the Sabbath day before and they were ready as soon as door broke, out the door to do their duty and honour the one they thought was going to save them. And then they're there at the tomb. No gods. A surprise. Stone moved. A surprised. Tomb. Empty. Surprise. And then angels appear and tell them the truth. You know all these things he said? All of those hints he gave you? It's all part of a bigger plan. He's not here. He is risen and when you thought it was all over god had a bigger plan so now do what he said wait for him because the all-conquering king is on the move you know this morning my lovely but slightly irreverent brother sent me a happy easter message with a lovely picture of jesus about to step out at the threshold of the open tomb and a voice coming from heaven saying not this year, son, in reference to the lockdown. But of course, the Lord's not surprised by our circumstances. Who knows what he's up to? 
this Easter in ways that we can't yet imagine. So let's be ready for him in unexpected ways he may have for us this year. God always has an often unexpected plan. Let's go over to Daniel Birch, who's going to lead us in prayer. Father God, this Easter story that we celebrate each year is so amazing. Because you sent your only son to free us from our sins and enable us to cross the bridge of your cross to everlasting life and friendship with you. Sorry that we sometimes don't listen to you and that we sometimes forget how much you love and care for us. Thank you for sending your only son to earth to teach us how to live and to take away our sins. Please help us to remember this incredible truth, not only today, but every day. The fact of your resurrection from death completely changed the world and gives joy where there is sadness. Help us to remember this particularly at this time of crisis, that we can always trust in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Daniel. God's plan is often unexpected. Let us not underestimate Jesus. Let us have our eyes open and our ears open even today to what he wants to say to us in our hearts, what he's saying to our nation, what he's saying to our world in his grace and his love and his mercy, even amidst the brokenness and pain that is going on at the moment. Jesus is wanting to be that light, be that hope, speaking truth to each one of us, if we would but listen. So I don't know about you, but we're, we've spent a lot of time at home, haven't we? Is this the most amount of time you've ever spent at home yeah. in one go? Yeah, yeah. You can't get out. And what, what happens to families when they spend time at home is they get bored. So they have to think of ways of entertaining themselves and one of the ways is playing unexpected pranks on each other. And I have heard that the Turners, and Leilani Turner in particular, is a bit good at playing pranks on her unexpecting father. So over to the Turner household for their pranks. Let's see what they've been up to. Hi, everyone. Um, as a family, seeing as we're all so bored, we thought it'd be a good idea to try and prank my dad so we're going to try and come up with two pranks um and try and get him this weekend so let's go so for this first one i'm going to pretend i've got a magic trick to show him and you'll see what i'll do instead coin So for the second, we are going to use a little play on words. Mom, Dad, can you come quick? There's a leak in the washing machine. Dad, no, it's, it's coming out fast. Can you? I can't hold the leak in the washing machine. Can you come? So it's a leak in the, in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we enjoyed that here i don't know if you did at home um i must use that leak in the washing machine one but if you've watched this and tuned in i can't use it to you um okay i wonder i mean Mike, I think I need to chat with you man to man about how you're going to respond to this. If we can go over live to the Turners. Here he is, Mike and Leilani. How are you both? You're OK? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. Yeah, Mike, um, now we've all just witnessed that you have had a couple of unexpected pranks played on you. How do you feel about that, Mike? But got that last one, actually, the leak one. Mm. I had to rush off the toilet. So I didn't hey! 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was on the toilet. And I panicked. I panicked and I rushed out. Yeah. He's yeah. going to go everywhere. He's going to go grab yeah. the towel from the bathroom. I was there and I was gutted. Absolutely gutted. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, it might even be too much information, but it's amazing. Oh, and we're glad that you shared it. Uh, that's how gutted I was. Yeah, sorry. So, the really important question I want to ask you this morning how are you going to respond? Well, Matt, I've, you know, I've been dreaming. You know, that yeah. the Gunge machine. The gun yeah, I love. yeah. I dreams of that. Yeah, the family stood underneath it. Yeah. Uh, so for those who don't know, as a church, we own a gunge machine that we use every year for our holiday yeah. club. You're just thinking whether yeah. you can rig that up and get Leilani. Be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. thinking it could be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you know, I, I wanted to get that revenge. You know, but you know, mm. yeah. But uh, I so don't what know. What are you going to do? Well, I've thought it long and hard and I'm bigger than that though Matt I think I'm bigger than that you know in terms of revenge I think I'm I'm not going to get the revenge I'm actually going to walk away from this and go no it's not worth it you know <laughs> I'll, I'll forgive them to move on I think I'll just forgive you're them a, yeah. you're a good man Mike you're a big man Mike God bless you thank um, you Matt. thank we'll you we'll wait and see if you really do walk away from this <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Mike. I think uh, Leilani's going to help me now just to think about this. So good to see you, Mike. Um, one of the questions is, uh, there's so much pain sometimes in the world. There's so much suffering. And at the moment, we're reminded of this. Um, there can be fear and worry, anxiety. Um, and then lots of it is around us, not caused by us, and even some of it is caused by us, by me, by you. Uh, we can be greedy, we can be hurtful, we can be um, aggressive, we can be violent, we can lie. Um, and the question was, how would God respond to this? Would he just leave a hurting world and walk away? Say, I don't want to know. Would he take his revenge? Would he punish us would he come down and would he be angry would he do something unexpected how would god respond to a world that's hurting broken to fear to pain to shame and to our sin to our aggression to our lies to our greed well this is what leilani is going to help us to do and for this we're going to need to help us to work out um how God responded. You're going to need your piece of paper, everybody, at home. If you've not got one, you've got about five seconds to go grab one from the printer. Um, do you want to come squeeze in Sophie next to me? There you go, darling. Right, Leilani. Can you? Hello. So, as you can see. Hi. Everyone at home, follow along with us. I'm going to follow along. We're going to follow along with Leilani as well. So keep up with us if you can. If you're a grown up, please do it as well. Just get a piece of paper. Um, it'd be good for everyone to do this this morning. So here we go. Go for it, Leilani. So we're going to start with this paper. We're not going to tell you what we're making because it's going to be an unexpected craft. So we so don't know what we're making. The bottom corner. Yeah. And you're going to fold it so that it's flush with that side. So you make a triangle. So take a corner and fold it up like so that. To make a triangle. Then yeah. This corner. Hang on. We're not there yet. Good. We're just doing them here. Okay. Nah. Yeah. Got that? So we've, yeah. we've folded one corner down of your piece of paper. To right create. A triangle. And then yeah. you're going to take this corner. Yeah. And you're going to fold it so you make another triangle. So you're going to fold it along. Oh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. My girlies have got that. Yeah. So you're taking your corner yeah, and you're folding it down to make it a house. Is it a house we're making, Sophie says? Is there a house? It's not a house. Good guess, though. It does look like a house. It does look like a house. And then we're now going to take the triangle and you're going to yep. fold it on top of the rectangle. Like that. So it looks like a, like a boat. Hat. Like that, like a boat or a hat? A hat. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a hat. It's not a hat. Okay, you know, I hope you're following along at home. So you were at the hat stage. So we've... We've folded, we've done we've done one corner, we've done the next corner, and we've folded up. That's all we've done. So Sophie's here, she's done one corner, 
she's done the next corner and then folded up like that fantastic now you want, you want the triangle flat on the table so you've got the rectangle on yep. top you're just gonna fold in half like that fold in half fold in half now what is that now who can guess what that is that that is um a triangle square thing correct that is what <laughs> um so from here you need it about so about an inch away, so about a thumb's length away from the pointy bit. So we've got this pointy bit sticking yeah. up on its own. Yeah. About a thumb length away. A thumb length away, yeah. On here. You're gonna either rip all the way down, or it's time to get your scissors and cut. Okay, I'll I'll rip mine. I'm gonna rip. So you, can, you can cut it. Right. I mean I say I'll rip mine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dust. Okay. Wait, can I cut all the way down? Yeah. Yeah, That's like it? that. You do. You that sort of shape. And you don't need this bit. You can get rid of all those bits. Yay! Right. <laughs> okay. And the last, any final guesses? This is the final step. Any final it is a small house with a chimney now, look. Like a, a semi detached. Did we put two together? Yeah. Or a ship. Or a ship. Or a shoe. Yeah. Or something, an animal. Yep, slug. <laughs> it's not any of those. Ouch. Unfold it. And what have you got? A Amazing. Who would have thought? Amazing. A cross. I think your crosses look better than mine. Maybe mine looks <laughs> a bit more rugged. That's so, so cool, Leilani. Thank you. So at home now, hopefully you should have a cross. If you've struggled with that and you just want to tear out the corners of the bits of paper, you can do that to join up with us so that you've got a cross. If you want to just cut one out, then do so. Thank you so much, Leilani. We're going to use this cross now just for a moment. Um, and we're going to think about the cross just for two minutes together before we pray. OK, so I want you to take your cross. And one of the questions we were asking as a family yesterday, just honestly, why? Why on earth did Jesus come on the cross? Why did he come and die on a cross for us? What was God thinking? What was Jesus thinking? Well, this was his response to all that pain and all that fear and all that worry and all that shame. This was his pain to all that loneliness and isolation. It was his response to all that loneliness and isolation. It was his response to all our greed and all our hurt and all our anger and all our aggression and all our lies. So he died on a cross, but why? How does that help anything? Well, one of the questions we may ask and we may say to God is God, you obviously don't really care about the pain that people cause. You don't care if somebody hurts somebody else. You don't care about murder or lies or aggression. You don't care about any of it. And Jesus would say, no, look at the cross. I came and I took all the blame and all the punishment and all of the weight of all those bad things. And even though I did nothing wrong, nothing wrong, I took the consequence of those on my shoulders when I died on that cross and I paid the cost and now it's paid and it's gone. If God did nothing about it, we could just say, God, so you're just going to walk away. You don't care. He says, I didn't walk away. Look, I paid the price. That bad stuff matters. It costs, it hurts. And a God who's just does something about it. He doesn't just ignore it. He died on the cross for it to take all our sin and all our mess. But the other thing is we might say to God, look, you've never experienced what it feels like. What we feel right now, if we feel afraid or lonely or isolated or hurt or scared, Jesus says, look at the cross. I didn't stay far away. I came near and I know what it is to be lonely and afraid and rejected and isolated and in pain. He's the God who understands. He's the God who we can't say, well, you wouldn't get it. He says, I do look at the cross. I did that for you. 
We might say, okay, God, you love us. You say you love us, but do you really? How could we know? He says, look at the cross. Greater love is no one than this. And to lay their life down for a friend. He gave up everything for you, Ams, for you, Soaps. He gave it all for me, for all of us, because he loves us so much. And the last thing we might say is Jesus, this promise of forgiveness and hope and a future, it sounds amazing. But how can we know it's true? He says, well, look at the resurrection. I'm alive. I was seen. I shared with my friends and I'm alive now and I speak to you today. I can speak to your heart. I can come and live within you. I am not dead. I am alive. You can know hope and the future and my love. It is true because of the resurrection. The Bible says Jesus Christ, our Lord, was shown to be the son of God when God powerfully raised him from the dead by means of the Holy Spirit. So you can't say to God, God, you don't care about the bad things people do. I do. And I took it all on, he says. You can't say to God, you never experience how it feels to be afraid or worried or lonely. He says, I do. Look at the cross. You say I love us, but do you, you say you love us, but do you really? Well, look at the cross. He does love us so much. And you promise us forgiveness and hope. How can we know? Well, look at the cross. It's empty. He has risen from the grave and he is alive today. So what I want you to do just in a moment now, we're going to um, we're going to play a song. And it's called I Cast My Mind to Calvary just in one moment. But during this song, I want you to do two things on your cross. On this side, I want you to write one thing that you struggle with. Now, that could be something you struggle with that you do wrong. It could be like lies or it could be anger. Or it could be something that you don't choose to do, but you struggle with maybe like loneliness or anxiety or fear. I want you to write one thing that you struggle with on the cross on this side. And as you do, I want you to realize that Jesus has taken that. He's experienced that and he's dealing with that on the cross. And on the other side, I want you to write a response. You can write something that Jesus has won for you, maybe hope, a future, joy, peace. Or you can just write a great big thank you across this side so something you struggle with and some response that you want to give to Jesus something he's won for you or something that you want to express thanks for we're going to listen to um I cast my mind to Calvary as we do that together let's do that now To Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me, I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, a savior on the cursed tree. Bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, 
Just hold our crosses, whatever you might have written on one side, the thing that you struggle with, and let's just pray together. So we say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the unexpected cross, the unexpected way you responded to all our hurt, all our fear all our shame, our loneliness, our pain, by coming and being with us and going through it with us to strengthen us. And thank you, Jesus, for the unexpected way you responded to all our hatred and our hurt and our lies and our pride by taking it all yourself and dealing with it all. Thank you that your love is bigger than anything we're going through. Thank you for the victory on the cross. And thank you that you rose again. And because of your resurrection, we can say thank you to you for the joy, for the peace and the security that we now have in you. The new life that you have given us in your precious name. We thank you for the cross. Amen. Amen. Friends, our time is pretty much up on this Easter day. We hope and pray you have an amazing uh, Easter day, whatever is left of it, even if you're on your own, that you get to enjoy something of this sun and be able to um, pray together and enjoy um, still reflecting on the resurrection. But before we go, and um, we do have one last song to sing, but before we sing it, I just want to ask you a question, because if you look around at the moment, it's hard to know what's next, isn't it? I think we've all been surprised by this coronavirus crisis. Everybody has. Nobody could have predicted what was happening. We've spoken about unexpected joy. We've spoken about God's unexpected plan. We've spoken about the unexpected cross. But I just want to ask you, is the future unexpected? What about your 
future because we may think the future is unknown we may think it's scary may think it's only ever going to go downhill but the amazing thing about the cross was that jesus won for all of us a future that is sure and certain and more wonderful than we could ever ever imagine he won a future for everyone who puts their trust in him where we know his love and his healing and we experience the delight of eternal life. God's been speaking to all of us in this period. Maybe he's been trying to speak to you. Maybe he's been nudging you, calling you to come back to faith, calling you to take your faith and trust deeper, calling you to the next step in your faith and trust whatever that might be, or maybe calling you for the first time. Look around what's certain. Jesus says, I am. I'm the way, the truth and the life. When I was 16, I read this word and I finished with these words from Revelation 21. And this was the moment that I realized what my future could be if I put my trust in God. This is the moment I realized his heart for all of us. And I gave my life to Jesus. It says this in Revelation 21. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and he will be their God. And I love this bit. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. It's the future God has promised for all who put their trust in him wiping away every tear from every eye. That future is sure and certain. I just want to ask you this morning, what about your future? Do you know what lies ahead for you? All of us can make a decision for Jesus even today. What a perfect day to do it on this Easter Sunday. A decision for those who already know him, just to renew in our hearts our love for him and our trust in him, our faith in him. And maybe for you, Perhaps for the first time, you might say, Jesus, I do want to give you my heart. I do want you to be my Lord and my saviour. I want to know what that future is. And I want to know that future now, breaking in your hope, your joy and your peace and experience it. So let's just pray together. I invite all, all of you tuned in, if you'd like to, just to take a moment to recommit to Jesus or to commit to him for the first time on this Easter Sunday. Let's pray together. And in this moment, let our futures go from uncertain to sure, from fear to joy, from unknown to known and from despair to hope. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you, Jesus, that you went there for me and for this hurting world that you love so much. I'm sorry for all the mess and mistakes in my life, all the times I've gone my own way, and I've hurt you and others. Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness and your resurrection. I put my future in your hands. You are my Lord and Savior. I give you my heart now today. And I receive your Holy Spirit. Come and bring me the joy and peace of new life with you. I love you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our final song together. See what a morning and I will pray a prayer of blessing.
light as the angels announce Christ is risen. See God's salvation plan, Lord's in love, born in pain, paid in sacrifice. Old in Christ a man, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. See Mary weeping, where is she laid? As in sorrow she turns from the empty tomb. Here's a voice ringing, calling her name. Is the Master, the Lord, raised to life again? The voice that spends her years speaking life. Tearing home, bringing peace to us. Will sound a healer, is for he lives. Christ is risen from the dead. One with the Father, ancient of days, through the Spirit who goes faith with us. Honor and blessing, glory and praise to the King, crowned with that and authority. Death, we are raised with Him, death is dead, love is won, Christ has conquered. And we shall reign with Him, for He lives, Christ is risen from the dead. And we are raised with Him, death is dead, love is won, Christ is conquered. And we shall reign with Him, for He lives, Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. Let's finish with a final prayer. Lord Jesus, risen and conquering King, the one who would not leave despair and death and darkness to reign, but the one who stepped in and busted apart and brings us hope and peace and joy and forgiveness. This day, we pray your blessing on our nation. We pray your blessing on our world. We ask for your blessing on our NHS and all workers who are struggling against this coronavirus. Lord, risen King, strengthen them, protect them and bless them and their families, we ask. Bless those who are mourning, Lord, with your peace and presence. Bless those who are struggling this day with illness. Bring your healing touch, we pray. And Jesus we praise you for these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, may he equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May you know God's peace and blessing this Easter day, whatever you're going through. We're going to finish our time with our Easter uh, greetings video montage. Uh, so let's just enjoy this together. But our service is now over and God bless you. Happy Easter from the Bradleys! Happy Easter from the Marches! Happy Easter from the Prince Williamses! Happy Easter, everybody! Happy Easter from Ralph and Marjorie! Happy Easter! Happy Easter, everybody! Happy Easter from Sharon! And Jez, happy Easter! Happy Easter, everyone, from Gary and Jane! Happy Easter from Brian and Jenny! Happy, Happy Easter, Easter everyone. everyone. Christ, Christ is risen. Much, Much love. love from Mark and Jude.
Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everyone, from the Graham family. Happy Easter, Christ, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone, from Michael and Grace. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Easter. from George and Sis Chapman. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, from the G's. Wishing you all a happy Easter from Ivy. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Happy Easter from Ray and Marilyn White. God bless you. Happy Easter, everyone, from the Wilcox family. I hope you have a great weekend. God bless you all. Happy Easter from us. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter from the Walkers. Happy Easter! Hi, wishing you all a very happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter, Easter from the Tots! Happy, happy Easter, Easter, everyone! Happy Easter, Easter, Easter from, from Dave and Lisa. Lisa. Happy, happy Easter, Easter everyone. everyone! Happy Easter to everyone from Catherine and Peter. Jesus, Jesus is alive. Happy, happy Easter. Easter. Happy, happy Easter, Easter from, from the Partridges! Hi all! Happy Easter from the PGs! Hallelujah! Happy Easter from the Riches! <laughs> Happy Easter from the Thompsons! Bye! Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! Happy Easter, Easter everyone. everyone! Hello everyone, it's Andrew and Helen. Happy Easter! Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from, from the Palmers! Happy Easter from, from the Tennis! Happy Easter, love from the Wardens. Happy Easter from the Marshall family. Happy Easter from Franklin. So, so good to see you all. And for those unable to uh, be on that video, on behalf of all of them, we wish you a very happy, happy Easter, Easter, everybody. Go and enjoy your uh, Easter day. And may you know God's blessing, may you celebrate the risen Jesus, may you put your faith firmly in him and celebrate him amidst all that's going on. Know that he's the way, the truth and the life. And we're going to finish. Um, it's all done, by the way. You can go now. You don't even need to listen to me. But we're just going to stream thine be the glory, not least because I know it's my mum's favourite Easter hymn. And I'm sure it's lots of your favourite Easter hymn as well. So let's finish just with that. But feel free to stay or go. God bless you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah.
Prince of Life. Life is not without Thee, a sinner's life. Make us more than conquerors through Thy death was Bring us into joy to Thy home Yeah. 